while it's everyone's least favorite month to be outside and everyone's most favorite month to watch miniature content. It is Beetle Gust. And if you don't know what that is, it means I'm going to be making Beetlejuice themed videos all August long. And if you're wondering what I'm going to be making, I've decided to squish together two things I need to do, which is build and make dolls. This is a pretty lofty goal. I'm hoping I can get it all done, but we shall see. My hope is to completely finish the first floor of the house and create the base for the second floor of the house so that I can start working on that in a few months. If you're new to my channel, this isn't the house. Let me show you the house. That's just the model. This is the house. <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's pretty big, but as you can see, I am missing some walls here. So I need to fill those in. I need to create the ceiling. I need to do the finishes on the floors and the walls. I need to make furniture and everything that goes in this space so that I can recreate this scene. This scene is where Barbara and Adam come back from the netherworld. They've been away longer than they expected. And when they come back, Delia has completely changed their home. So yes, that means hopefully by the end of August, I will have created the dolls for both Adam and Barbara. I was really hoping that I could also make Lydia, but I really have to get the captain's quarters done by November to go to the museum. So I'm trying to be kind to myself and I'm just gonna have to fit as much in as I can for August. And whatever we don't finish up, we will do right after I get back from the museum. So that's the plan. <laughs> A lot to do, but I am very excited. So let's start with some building. If you've been watching this project since the beginning, you will recognize what I am doing here. I need to glue two sheets of foam board together. This is what I have made almost the entire project out of, is double thick foam board walls. You can buy foam board that is thicker, but it's often way more expensive. So I'm using some glue to put in between these two pieces. I sanded them first so the glue could take hold. And because the glue has some moisture content in it, I'm going to have to put it underneath something heavy and flat for a very long time. So I'm just going to be using quite a few books and journals and one, two, three blocks to keep these flat. The other thing I'm going to have to make with foam board is the ceiling for the first floor. Now this may seem kind of out of order because I don't even have the walls yet, but believe me, I need to make this part first before I finish these final walls because this area of the house is open to the second floor which is honestly why I've probably put it off so long. I did not quite know how to do this part. And let me tell you, this model has been so valuable to me because I have been able to look at it over and over again to figure out where I am in the building process. So if you are thinking about building something of this size from scratch, I definitely suggest building a smaller scrap model first so that you can think out all your ideas. So when you get to the more expensive, bigger materials, you don't waste as much. While I was straightening up some of my traced lines, I realized from this model that I needed to square up the floor for the second floor because the bay window is only on the first floor. And if I did not have this model to show me that, I would have totally missed it and had to fix those corners. So once I had figured everything out, I was able to start cutting out my very first ceiling for this project. This is going to take quite a few pieces of foam board because I need two pieces for the ceiling and then two pieces that are going to be the floor for the second floor. And the reason for this is I want it to be extra strong since I am building two more floors on top of this. So this is just the first layer of what's going to be several layers. Once I knew that I had cut out this piece correctly, I could start making room for the stairs. The stairs are going to have to go up past the ceiling in order to connect with the second floor. So I'm just tracing out the areas that need to be open. This opening has a curve to it, so I'm using a drafting tool called a flexible curve, and I did find a link for you if you're interested in something like this. I will put it down in the description box below. 
It's a flexible piece of plastic that allows you to create a curve that you want and then trace it out onto your project. And I did find for this, it worked really well. I didn't have to go find something that was the shape I wanted in order for me to trace it. All this foam board that you see below the curve will now be cut out. This will make room for the stairs and it will also be the area where you can look from the second floor down to the first floor. I'm leaving in some real-time footage of me cutting this curve because I do often get questions about how I get my cuts so clean. So for this, I am first doing a very shallow pass with the knife. This gives my knife kind of a guide on where it needs to go. And then I'm getting deeper and deeper into the foam board cut, going very slowly. Then I can turn the foam board and do the same thing in the other direction. So the key to this is not to try and cut it all the way through on the first pass. Go very slow and give your knife some direction on the curve you actually want. This piece can now be added back to the first floor and you can really start to see how this is going to be open to this lower area that is the foyer or the entrance to the house. And this is how the stairs are going to fit in with everything. As I said, there's going to be a few more layers on top of here, so that's why it doesn't match up perfectly. I want this to be incredibly sturdy, even though I'm just using foam board for most of the construction. So now that it's done, it's kind of reminding me of some kind of MC Escher drawing at the moment, but I am going to double up this foam board as I previously stated. I'm going to do this by gluing just some big generic chunk pieces onto the other side, allow that to dry, and then later once it is dry and completely flat, I will cut out the excess pieces so I have a double thick layer. I didn't have any more large pieces of foam board. I'm going to have to go out and get some more of those. Now you're not going to see these pieces for quite a while in this video. I am going to let them dry for as long as I can, at least 24 hours, but the longer the better. So letting those dry flat is going to be the key to not having any warping. Speaking of preparing things, I am prepping this entire poster board with some gray paint. This is going to be my floor for the downstairs area. Originally, I was going to use some wood, but when I went back to look at my references, it does look like it is just gray everywhere, gray concrete floor as much as possible. And I did find a little spider friend in my project, so I pulled out the vacuum to kind of remedy some of that. Once all the dust was cleaned up, and honestly, like, I missed that about the Adams Family House, like, dust was wanted, <laughs> but this is a little bit more of a clean, sleek look. Once the dust was all cleaned up, I could start creating a pattern for the floor. This is going to be key in me cutting the floor correctly so that I could put it into these areas where the walls are already built. There's going to be three separate pieces I have to create. There's going to be the living room, the foyer, and the dining room. So I'm creating these using some scrap paper that misprinted off of my printer. This is a great way to reuse paper that was just going to go into the recycle bin anyway. I cut them into little squares so that I can easily get into the corners, and I just use a bit of tape to put them all together. So here's how it looks once it's done. It does look a little bit uh, messy, <laughs> but believe me, there is some method to this madness. I would rather get messy with the scrap paper so that when I get to my pieces that I'm actually cutting for the floor, I only have to make one cut. So here's the shape for the foyer area. You also see a little red mark on the top that lets me know it's the top of the floor because I don't want to accidentally turn it over and cut it in the wrong direction. I am just making sure that my floor pattern is as sturdy as possible, so adding a little bit of tape here and there if I find that it's needed. Now I can move on to transferring these to my prepared poster board that I painted gray earlier. I'm going to carefully go around the patterns with some pencil and mark them out. Only two pieces are going to be made out of this gray concrete. The other one is going to be a special tile design, but don't worry, I always need gray for this project, so this gray poster board is not going to go to waste in any way. 
To protect the paint, I am covering it with a layer of matte Mod Podge, and even though it says it's matte, it does have a little bit of a shine, which is what I want. I spread it over the top and then go back and carefully lay it down a little bit better with my brush. And what I'm doing off to the side there is getting the excess off my brush so I don't have any lumps or bumps. You will still be able to see the brush strokes, but I want them to be as smooth as possible. After that's completely dry, I can cut it out and prepare to add it to my project. It should be a perfect fit because of the process I just went through. You will see a few gaps at the edges, but they are thin enough to be covered by the baseboards I will be putting on in a future video. I did want to note that I used Fabrifix for gluing it down because it doesn't warp. However, it looks like there are fingerprints everywhere. This is the Fabrifix reacting with the Mod Podge, even through the poster board and the paint. It started out looking really bad, but it did get better as it dried. Now I'm going to be working on the tile for the foyer. I had this pulled from a reference in the movie where Charles is being held over the floor by Beetlejuice and I decided to try and recreate this in Inkscape. It was such an interesting pattern that I hadn't noticed before. It was when I was looking for references of this space that I noticed it, so I just had to try and recreate it. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, my printers are not working well, so I went to Office Depot and had these printed out, and I think they came out really, really good. So I'm going to add these onto another piece of poster board, and I'm cutting the pattern so that it'll line up and match because I can't use one 8x10 piece to cover this entire area. It's a little bit too big for that. I spread out the glue as I had been doing earlier and then was quickly attacked by a bug, which was not ideal as this is a time sensitive process. And then once it was all down, I could cover that with Mod Podge as well because I wasn't sure how durable this print was going to be. These are going to have a lot of furniture placed on top of it and I just don't want to scratch up the paint or the print. I had some extra long pieces that I painted and cut out. These are going to be the transition strips that go between each different type of flooring. This is going to give my flooring a more finished look and cover any imperfections in the fit between each floor. This has been a lot of boring prep work, to be honest. And it's a little bit more prep work than I thought I was going to need to do. And I feel like things are going slowly, but because I'm doing a lot of this work beforehand, I feel like tomorrow, so this is the second day, tomorrow a lot of things are gonna start coming together fast because I've done the prep work. I've made the materials, I've gotten the textures together, I've laid the floor down. So my hope is all of this will pay off and things will go a little quicker soon. We shall see. <laughs> Another thing I needed to prep was the back of this bay window wall. It needs to be painted gray, just like everything else in this house. And the reason for this is because I plan to add the grid that you see in the living room behind Delia when she's having some of their friends over. So you can see a sample here and keep this sample in mind because I missed a few things very important about this grid, but here I am happily designing along and not paying attention to any of that. I did make the grid a little larger than I originally wanted to, and I think I could have even made the grid bigger. But what I'm doing is I'm making this in a 3D space, and then I created a wall section, and so this is a sample of the area that this grid needs to go in. My hope is that I can print this and then just slide it into place in the living room. So I still have a lot of things drying. This is in my studio studio is what I call it, but the workroom next to my um, area where I'm working on the Beetlejuice house. I am also using this new Elegoo printer. It is an incredibly fast printer and I thought this would be a great project to try it out on, especially because I'm in, in prep work mode here. I need this to print out 
rather quickly because I have a few other things I need it to do at the same time. So here you can see it. This is real time. It is not sped up. This is how fast it goes. So I've been pretty impressed with this little printer. It has a few more things to do for this project, but it started out by making this grid and I am so excited to get this into the house. There were a few little snafus in the print and that's just because it didn't grab onto the build plate which was easily fixed with some glue but this I can just cut out with some flush cutters and I don't have to worry about that showing. So very easily done, super fast and ready to go into my project. Now I had in my mind for some reason that this grid was white and I didn't think to go back and look at my reference. <laughs> I would just had it perfectly in my mind that it's white. I was so happy I did not have to paint it. So I started adding some shims of matte board into the bottom and the side because it was a little bit smaller than I needed, which was good because the smaller is better than it being too big and me having to reprint it. I also went ahead and put the baseboards in this area because it's going to pretty much be cut off once I glue it. So I decided to go ahead and glue it in place did not recheck my references. I'm just gonna go for it because I was so excited. Except it's not white, it's a gray color. And I did not realize this until Mr. Technology was asking me about it. I even filmed this shot because I was so proud of it. You could go and you could see it around the corner. I was so excited. And when I pulled it up, nope, it is gray. And it's also probably a little bit larger than I printed it. So I had to go back and rip everything out. Luckily, I showed this to him pretty close to the time that I had glued it in. So the glue had really only started to take hold. He helped me hold down the project while I pulled with all of my strength. Well, not all of my strength because I didn't want to break anything, but I was very glad to finally get the grid out. It's the next morning. I'm wearing the same shirt, but comfier pants because we got a lot to do today. As you saw yesterday, I had to pull my grid out, but since then I have painted it. So I've got Delia's lovely gray, <laughs> gray everything. I don't know why I thought it was white. I'm going to reinstall this. So this is in the house and then it's time to start putting up some walls, which I am very excited about. These are going to be the front walls to the front part of the house. It's actually going to be the entrance to the house. So I'm very excited to get going on that. And by now, after all of this, the floors, the prep work and everything, the foam board should be dry. There should be no warping. I hope there's no warping. And when it comes to things being a little bit different than they are in the movie, I have to remind myself of what I said at the beginning of this project that I'm going for the essence of the house and everything doesn't have to be 100% screen accurate. It, it can't be. <laughs> because we already figured out the sound stages that everything was filmed on doesn't fit into the shell of the house. So I'm trying to keep that in mind as I move forward and make minor adjustments. Now it is take two of installing the grid. Thankfully, I didn't have to repaint anything because the grid's gonna cover up any of those areas that tore when I pulled it out the first time. And I do have to agree that I think the dark gray looks better than the white did. So I just keep liking Delia's style more and more. The foam board pieces had now been underneath some heavy books for about 48 hours and I felt confident enough to remove them and start using them. And of course, Stormy was very helpful in this process. She double checked everything for me. Please excuse any mess and my outfit. We're very much still in summer mode around here. We have all sorts of fun family projects going on all over the place. So now I can move the wall foam board and the ceiling foam board back to my studio. I'm just going to remove any of the excess foam board around the ceiling that I previously cut. This is a tedious process. However, I am so much happier with a double thick ceiling. I don't have to worry about it bending in any areas. It's going to be very strong to support the next floor up. I'm taping it in place and getting the stairs where they need to go so I can start cutting the walls that are gonna go around this open area. 
All of the walls that don't have a ceiling directly on top of it need to be as tall as the foam board I just laid down for the ceiling. So I'm going to be extending this wall that I had previously glued down with just a strip of double foam board. And by gluing that on top, I fixed that problem. Previously, I did not know how I was going to make this space, so I'm glad it was an easy fix. Now I can cut the remaining foam board to be that same height and start building my walls. I'm using the same process I did in the very beginning of this project by adding a square piece of wood to the ends. This is going to give a little bit more strength to my foam board walls and in the end it will help me by allowing me to clamp things in a few areas and I know I'm not crushing the foam board. I'm not showing it in the video, but I do keep referencing my chipboard model that I made earlier on to know where the windows need to be and what walls need to be added where. You can also see that I have outlined where the walls need to be with a red pencil on the floorboards just to make sure that I have them correct before I start building. I realized where the stairs were going to be, I'm going to have this little alcove that I do think would be a good area for me to run some wiring if needed. So I need to cut that out before I build the walls, otherwise it's going to be almost impossible to cut later on if I do decide I need to use it. As the walls were going up, it was surprising to me how much smaller this foyer area started to feel. For the longest time, there were no walls here, and now all of a sudden it's completely enclosed. So now I'm putting up the front area that will have the entrance door. Speaking of the entrance door, I needed to design that. So I decided to 3D print it. There are gonna be a lot of doors in this project. So if I can design it once and print it a few times, that is definitely going to save me some work. I pulled up a reference where you can see the front door really well. It has a window opening and then it has two panels towards the bottom. So I'm going to try and replicate that as close as I can. It does seem like Delia mostly spray painted over the finishes that were already there. So I'm hoping this door stayed pretty much the same in Delia's version of the house. This is how it looked once it was done. I took all the pieces apart and started printing them on the Elegoo Neptune 4. And again, I'm so glad this was working quickly because there were several parts to print just for this doorway area. Again, this is not sped up. This is how fast it's moving. And in just two hours, I had two doors that were completed by the printer. I do have plans for these to be opening doors. So I have put something in my design to hopefully make that happen, but I don't as of yet know if it will work. So this is completely an experiment at this point. So now that I have those complete, the nice thing is I can put this onto my project and trace out the opening I'm going to need for the doors. I also wanted to test out how easy it was to remove supports. I didn't have any supports on the grid I previously installed, and I hate removing supports, but these were so easy to just peel off the back of the door. I was very impressed by that. That's always my least favorite part of 3D printing. I did find that where the supports were connected, it made the back of the door rather rough. So in next week's video, I am going to be showing you how I plan to finish this so it's as smooth on the back as it is on the front. Now I can take the frame and I'm going to trace it out on my foam board. This is going to make installing it later after I paint it so much easier. I can just cut out the opening and when I go to glue it in place, I wanna have the door frame in the wall so I'm not at any point squishing it to where it's too small for the door frame to be inserted later on. This same process will work if you are purchasing your doors and building your walls from scratch. You can pre-put the door frames in place before you glue your walls just so that you know everything's still going to fit once it's glued in place. This was another area that I felt it was important to clamp these pieces together and having the wood pieces really helped with that. So that is the final wall that I need to install for the first floor. That's kind of a fun thing to be able to say. As you can see, the 
top of the walls are even with the top of the foam board ceiling I just recently cut and that is going to help me stack the second floor on when I get to that. Off camera I prepared this poster board. I used this texture spray plus a gray spray paint spray and this I've shown in a few videos working on this project. Then I can cut the pieces to size. First I cut them down by height making sure it matches the height of the wall and then I just cut out any openings and start gluing them down. It may seem like it would be easier to do this before I glue the walls in, but I find it's easier to match up the corners by doing this after it's installed. It takes a lot more time and it's much more tedious, but I do find I get better corners by doing it this way. This took me, I don't know, maybe two or three hours to get everything glued back in. And so I just took my time, put on a show, and then at this point is when I realized I didn't cut out one of the windows and the wallpaper was already gluing in place. So there's always something that pops up, but there's always a solution to it. So I just very slowly, calmly use my craft knife to cut through little cuts at a time, trying not to rip the poster board wallpaper. I pushed it from the front to the back, not to rip any of the paper forward and that problem was solved, thank goodness. The final step to finishing off these walls was to use some of the gray spray paint. I just sprayed it onto a paper plate and a brush and cover up those white edges of the poster board. This makes a really nice finish on the corners. Before I end this video, I want to make sure and say a big thank you to Elegoo for sending me the Neptune 4 Pro to test out on this Beetle Gust project. I'm really happy with these first few prints that I got off of the printer. I have a special place in my heart for filament printers. I really love the results of this one and I look forward to seeing what else it can do. If you want to learn more about the printer, I will leave a link in the description box below. Here's a few final shots of the Beetle Gust project. I might have gone a little heavy on the green filter on my light for this one, but what's Beetle Gust without a little green hue? So that's going to be all for the first week of Beetle Gust. I know it was a lot of boring steps, but there were a lot of things that needed to get done so I could get to the fun stuff that's coming up. I think my voice is echoing into the project. Echo! 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 echo. echo. I do want to say if you have sent something in for the Beetlejuice project, I do have a pile of things that I'm excited to show. However, I'm going to wait till next week because I think it'll be more fun to show the things in front of the finished stairs. So stay tuned for that. The stairs are going to be a lot more fun and a lot more artistic than some of these other bits were in this video. I'm also going to be working on the door and the windows to hopefully complete all of the construction for the downstairs. Happy Beetlegust! I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Are you are you ready to show them your haircut? Okay. Oh. <laughs> she got her summer haircut. Ooh. We got to get started on the next one. You're doing all the windows. So I hope you've been studying. It's a beetle gust miracle. I just put the camera down, done filming, and I found the missing spoon from the kitchen room. So we can go put it in. Well, not officially. I'm just gonna lay it in there for now. Your spoon is back, yay!